Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Carla Navarez. I'm one of the instructional designers at the University of Central Florida. Thank you for joining us today. Before we get started, let's go over a few quick housekeeping items. Please feel free to pipe any comments or questions into the chat at any point through the session. If you like to come uh, on mic uh, to take a verbal comment, and then please use the raise hand icon, which can be found on the click and participant button along the bottom of the Zoom meeting controls. This session is being recorded. Remember, you can enable captioning on Zoom menu bar if needed. Now, I'd like to welcome our presenter, Dr. Dan Keyes from the University of Texas, and their and his session, Beach Time with the Virtual Small Group, Cache the Data on this wave of research. All right. Well, thank you, Carla. All right. So, this is a great way to start this, I think, if you ask me. If we could, please go to uh, menti.com and type in that little there code uh let's see what is it 41284806 and answer a quick question in your current position do you work primarily alone unfettered by outside people um or do you work in tandem with people uh, in some way a team a department you, you work with a colleague you check in with somebody you you know and it depends on the day you wake up and you go heck with it i am i am just going to play it by ear today if i want to be nice to others in the sandbox or not That's about right. <laughs> yeah. I can see how this is probably going to go. <laughs> so what I've kind of learned over the years is that. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, water went down the wrong pipe. The, uh, the, the majority of the world works in some kind of team at some point. We rarely get the opportunity to just work unfettered in this world and do whatever we want willy nilly, uh, as my uh, upbringing meant up in the, uh, in the north. Um, so we actually do, for the most part, work in a team of some kind that's dependent on somebody somewhere, um, you know, doing something. Um, gone is the day of my, you know, my my great grandfather working out on the farm all day long. But even he had to work with somebody. You know, he had to, you know, get help sometimes to do some things. Or, you know, he had to rely on the market to be the right market. Uh, you know, some of that stuff. It still was kind of a team. Well, things haven't changed a whole heck of a lot. We do uh, need to work as a team. Uh, and, and I think part of what I've learned over the years, and, you know, this is, I don't know, it's getting close to 30 years of being an educator. Um, we have to teach students why they work on a team before they work on a team. Otherwise, they kind of stare at us and go, why is this important? Why do you want me to work with others? Because sometimes it's not easy. And I agree, <laughs> working with others is not always an easy thing. Um, and I, it, it, it isn't easy getting yourself into a group and, and uh, making the time in a class is not easy um, because uh, it, it does take extra time to create an activity and to run an activity. So why should we do it? Well, there's a host of reasons, you know, you know, it's correlated in, in research to, you know, this individual achievement, you know, a better individual achievement. That's important. I use it because it creates this, um, uh, it create, I use it early, you know, music is um, something that, uh, that you normally consider, I'm a good musician, or I'm a good person, or I'm, I'm a good, I'm okay with music, and if I'm not, I'm not, so then I'm really apprehensive about it. So I, I know that students probably come into my course going, I'm okay with music, or this is not going to be going well for me. So I try to make sure that when they come into music, they get into groups. And that way, they feel like they've got a support system. And 
Um, so I want to make sure that they've got a support system and that can be a, a different person that maybe has a little bit of music and that can help them. And so that way they get this little bit of, you know, besides the professor, they got a little bit of, you know, a support system they could turn to and go, did you get what he was talking about? Or how do I get that? And then they can do like that little elbow partner thing, you know, um, can I clear my notes with you? And that's an important thing. Working in a group enhances communication. You know, we, we get that. Um, you know, well-designed group activities stimulate creativity. Uh, those kinds of things. You know, it's highly valued. If you look at the at the research coming out of what value or what those uh, uh, corporate uh, entities value every year in their surveys, there's always one or two. Number one and number two are always communication and, and teamwork. You know, those things are so up there every year. Uh, and they gain more accurate picture of how others see them. So how does that happen? By looking at the feedback they get from other students. How do students see themselves is important. And the, how do they get that? And the feedback they receive from their colleagues. It's really important. And uh, then I found this other thing. It's a little bit more simplified. And I thought, wow, these are a little more digestible and it might work better giving these to the students why do we teach teams wow pretty simple exposed to a variety of perspectives ah right there so simple and clean you improve your vocabulary because you practice it you practice talking about the task you practice talking about the the concepts in class to another person you learn to teach. We all know as 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 teacher or as teachers, yeah, as teachers. We all know as teachers that if you can teach it, you know it. Yeah, that's important. It's called reciprocal teaching, whatever you call it. It's important. And they learn to manage personalities. This is the hardest part about working in teams. You have to work with different personalities. All right, and that's really cool leveraging talents of peers this is cool stuff how many of us have taken the disc the myers-briggs colors um we, we could go on how many of those per, um, personality tests are there out there and trying to figure out what your talents are or what your personality types are we've got to figure out what our talents are and get people, as I say, in the right seat on the bus so that they're doing what they're strong at. And you've done many of them. I know, Sue. Yes. We have to be, we have to, we have to be knowledgeable as leaders um, where people are strong and where they're weak. Get them into the right seat, get them performing their strengths so that on the team that we have, they're performing at their best. And the students need to learn how to do that as well. And I think that's important. And it's not just because we need to do it in our class, but because we need to teach students how to be doing that all the time. Uh, we need to have them know what their strengths are and be able to communicate those to peers. Um, I'm good at this, I'm good at this, but I'm not good at this, and I'm not good at this. I teach my students that. When you get ready in your meet and greet, uh, conversation in, in the classroom, you know, you might tell people, I'm really good at technology and I have some musical background, but I am not good as an organizer and I'm not good at this. That helps us, you know, as a, as a, as a group, you know, to figure out, okay, you'll be good in our group because we, we have these things that we need. Learn negotiation skills. Aha, uh -huh. this week I've got a lot of stuff going on. I probably shouldn't be the leader of the group this week. I should probably take more of a backseat and just, you know, do a couple things on that project. Those are some simplified of the benefits. And I like that. And I put down my source there. It was a really great source. I really enjoyed that. It's a really short article, by the way. Okay. <laughs> so why, if groups are so darn good, why do we get so much pushback from faculty and students? Because by golly, we get pushback and we get pushback and we get pushback. I, for years, I've been watching and I've been thinking, huh, 
Well, I mentioned virtual groups, and the first thing I get is eye rolls, <laughs> and I get, Ugh, no, and here's my drop slip. I don't want to be a part of this. Uh, I get really kind of these really negative things, and then I, you know, and I, and I think you might recognize some of these, uh, some of these uh, memes, you know, oh, they got this, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> folks. It's out there because they they are they are true, and we we have we have problems that we've got to address. Um, you know, it, it 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 and it's true. We have somebody that does almost all the work, and one that thinks they're being helpful, but they're really not. And then one person was there one day, and they come back, and they at the end, and they're, wow, I'm here. Great, let's present. <laughs> uh, great. Um, and then, yeah, let me down one more time. Um, and then you have the groups that just, I, I, I've always had them. I've always had them. Those, those teams that just rock it from the start. And it's like the dream team assemble, you know? <laughs> and I just go, wow. And I can always predict them when they happen when they form because they're going to be the first four or five teams in the course that assemble uh they're going to they're always going to make it because they're the first ones bam they form on their own and they're perfect and then i always know the groups they're going to their their memes their group projects yes i know uh, i know um and then i always know the meme uh the 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 groups that aren't going to make it and it's the ones that i'm constantly um, spurring them on to communicate. Uh, and so I, my first two weeks of every course that has group projects, I am interacting with them in like group Canvas messages because we use Canvas as our LMS or group emails. Um, and I, I ask them what their, what their preferred email is in their, um, in their uh, meet and greet so that if they don't use the university email system, we aren't required to use it um, here. So I ask them, what's your favorite email? Great, put that there. And then I create a group email with those emails and I put myself in it and I ask them, use that. You can reply all if you want, or they can use the Canvas message. You can reply all if you want, and, and you can leave me in it. Yeah, it creates a you know, a lot of messages for me. And I know how to delete and skip over those things now that I'm used to it. But it helps me understand that's group seven. Great. Group seven is rocking and rolling. You know, group 28 is rocking and rolling. I, these are great things for me to know. But, you know, I also know I haven't seen anything from group, you know, 18. Something's going on. Or I can see that John from group 17 is really reaching out and I think I saw Becky reply to him, but I haven't seen Josue, you know, reply yet. And so now I know we've got to get into this, you know, what's going on. So it kind of gives me a little bit of an indicator. I, do I sit here and do checklists and all that? Not really, but I try to pay attention in the first two, three, even sometimes four weeks to really kind of hone in who's busy in the groups. Because that's where I, if I, and I ask the groups once in a while, what's going on? Because what I want to make sure is that the group is working. Well, so this group project, um, what I wanted to do, um, this research project, I should say, what I really wanted to do is find out on a national scale, what's going on? Who's using group projects? Because I know, you know we, we, we just went through this pandemic. Um, we were doing a lot of stuff in class. That we probably can try to do online as well and i know that there's stuff going on online i've been doing group projects online for years um, and most semesters things go fairly well some semesters i have problems more problems than you know than i care to admit but most of the time i do fairly well so i created this and it was it's a 12 question survey um it has irb approval of course and i sent out uh, the invitations via email 
to my TX DLA folks, my Texas Digital Learning Association folks here in Texas, because that's where I'm from here, Texas. Uh, and they, um, and then I also emailed them to online teachers at my own institution, only those teaching online courses. So uh, that that's the way that went. And then I also I presented in Orlando at um, uh, Accelerate uh, for the OLC conference in October, and I shared the QR code there, and uh, I also shared the QR code for the survey at uh the digital education summit which was a which is uh for sam houston state here in texas and it's a uh, uh it's an online conference as well anyway the responses are all anonymous so i don't know who fills out the form but one of the first questions is is just and you'll see them here in a minute it's just do you teach for higher education um you know in the last couple of years i don't capture ip addresses and uh, it's the informed consent is the first question it's, it's pretty cool all right. So the re results. Um, 89 people so far have responded. It's a descriptive survey with a qualitative type analysis. Question one, do you teach online courses for a college or university? 93% said yes. The other 7% were told, thank you very much. You're done. All right. Uh, question two. Um, yeah. Um, uh, do you use small groups? 62% said yes. So that was that was good to see. And then um, how are the students divided into those small groups? That was another question that I thought would be interesting. 40% uh, said they were randomly generated by the instructor at the beginning of the course by some nature. 23% uh, were self-subscribed. So the students got to decide somehow how to get into groups. 20% uh, had some kind of instructor set criteria, either alphabetically or um, some criteria. You know, you 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 people with red hair, I, I'm making stuff up here. Somehow you all get put into groups. And then other mechanisms were 17%. Uh, um, the other stuff. All right, question four. Oh, the size of the group. Okay, now we're getting into some nitty gritty stuff, right? The size of the group, 11% um, of the respondents said it was two to three students. And then 29% um, uh, said three to four students. And then 38% were four to five. And then you can see it gets a little bit smaller after that. So it looks like three to five students is kind of the sweet spot, right? And uh, question five, um, how long do students remain in the virtual small group? Um, and this one kind of shocked me because I thought, my, my feeling is leave them. But only 57% said they're stable through the entire semester, while 43% changed them at some point, at least once during the semester. Um, that was interesting to me. I thought they would stay in the same group. Question six, we're halfway through the survey. How do your students typically communicate uh, within a virtual small group? And email, um, and these are in, you know, the, the, you know, the percentage. So email is number one, Canvas uh, or Blackboard group tools of some kind. Uh, and then the, you know, the uh, Canvas or Blackboard message, whatever it was, Zoom, Teams, FaceTime, something like that. Um, what was the other one? There was a um, uh, the big uh, the big blue button was that was another one right there. Text or group me messaging, uh, Google Docs, Dropbox, OneDrive, that kind of stuff. Plain old phone call and social media came up, and then face to face. Those were interesting. Uh, question seven was: Do you consider small group projects part of a high stakes grade in your course? Ha, huh. 57% said yes. These are high stakes grades. Now, um, do virtual members or do, do these uh, students grade each other? Aha, 60% said yes. They do grade one another in the course. Ha, huh. so then do you count these grades that they give their peers as part of the grade? That was question number nine. 
yes, 54% of the time, that grade uh, given by a small group member is counted as part of the small group grade, 54% of the time. Very interesting. All right, so that's two thirds of the way through the survey. Here we go. This is getting really interesting. Now, in, in question 10, I changed from, you know, um, from, you know, multiple choice kind of stuff or fill in the answer. This is a put whatever you want open text box. So then I asked, how do you determine the grade for each member? And, and I kind of, um, this was kind of like a grounded, just color coded these things and um, kind of put them into categories. These are basically the what the answers kind of fell into. Grading rubric is one, individual grade and a group grade kind of were used in tandem, it looks like, for another group. And, and, the, and these kind of are in order of how strong of a response they received. The team project rubric and the group evaluation form. So there was a rubric that was scored, and then there was also this group member evaluation form that also was used to kind of score and, and put the, and then somehow average together. And then several people just said, everybody gets the same score no matter what. And that was interesting. Um, a couple people mentioned a mechanism for tracking participation in the LMS. And then they just used intuition. And that's how they gave grades for the individuals. And I thought that's very interesting. And then they just said the, the, the other one that I saw was they just give pass fail grades, basically a complete incomplete for the for the group. And I thought, OK, so it's basically just, you know, kind of a, a complete incomplete. So that was an interesting question. Anybody got questions about the first 10 questions? You can come off mute here because I am not one of those teachers that teaches by lecture. Okay, because now you're going to have to talk now. Are you ready for it? You're going to have to talk. There, there's no sitting back. You ready? Sue's ready. Sue, Sue doesn't even know what we're going to do. But folks, I'm a fun guy. If you haven't figured this out, I'm already a fun guy. But for the last two questions, I decided I'll put the top six answers of the survey on the board. And you're going to play a game. You're going to have to guess the game. And that means you're going to have to. You're going to have to guess the top six answers on the board. Actually, it's the top five answers on the first on the first one. So the you just you just know I'm a music guy. I can't be serious too long. Here we go. What are some typical statements, either in written or verbal form, uh, from your students con uh, concerning virtual small group projects? I hate working in groups. I don't oh. want to do all the work. Oh, okay. so I hate working in groups. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, UG, UG. I see UGs. Okay, UG, UG was not it. I don't want to share the grade. Oh, I got one. Okay, I got to hide the question. Hurts my grade. Oh, oh. Doug has never logged into the group. I like this. Do we have to work in groups? <laughs> Doug. Oh, Doug is MIA. <laughs> Doug is MIA. All right. Okay. Okay. I got to get my mouse back over here. This is good. You guys are good. All right. Um, I don't like working with people. <laughs> I'd be in a group by myself. <laughs> I get that one. I do. 
Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't like working with people. Um, that one actually did not uh, come up. I can't believe it. I, I, I will end up working alone. Oh. Uh, oh, my. Some of these that came in, I, I don't know my role. Yes. Okay. All right. Groups are for people who don't like getting things done. <laughs> I love the chat. Oh, my goodness. Uh, how do we divide up the work group? What? <laughs> my group isn't responding to my text. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh, so we've got somebody. We've got to, like, <laughs> copy the chat. This is like listening to my students on a daily basis. Woohoo! I learn better on my own. Oh, there is no group <laughs> no in my group. I did all the work. Oh my gosh, I can't buzz all these. All right. How do I get an A? Yes, I rolls. Yes. Okay. Folks, I got to show you. Number five. It should be low stakes grading. That was the fifth most common answer. To the question. Let me show you the question again. Let me show you. This should be low stakes grading. Yeah, they wanted the students said it should be low stakes grading. Yep. That's <laughs> they wanted low stakes grading. Number four. This would be better if it was an upper division course when we could do uh online virtual groups yeah and yeah, this just makes everything yeah groups don't work online basically what students say yep can we can we count this as extra credit oh lord oh lord oh man i gotta get these these would be good these would be good in the <laughs> in the paper all right how about we moved around too Round two is going to be more fun. Okay. Because this, this, yes. All right. What is it Jim Carrey says? The points, the points don't matter. They don't add up. Whatever it is. That's whose line does it. Whose line is it anyway, right? Okay. What's the question now? Question number 12 on the survey. What are your suggestions? And this is the faculty member's suggestions for best practice for virtual group projects. Make them optional. Oh, oh, more group projects. Oh, Sue's a title <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm already losing track. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, this is great. Sorry. Okay. Make them optional. I got a buzz. Uh, All right. More group projects. No. Uh, Susan Tattletale. I won't buzz Susan Tattletale. We all knew it. <laughs> Sorry, Susan. <laughs> Begin with team expectations. Oh. Oh. I'm going to give that one. All right. I got to hide the question. Uh, yeah, we're going to go with, that's the number two, clear roles. Yes. Establish norms and expectations. Yes, that, that one's up there. Okay. Assign roles. Good job. Let them pick their groups. Let's see. That one didn't come up. No. Peer review. Oh, that one didn't come up. Man, got a buzz. Got a buzz. Mm. Oh, that was a third strike. Oh, boy. Clear directions. I, that gets a cheer. Oops. Oh, oops! That was that wasn't the cheer. Sorry. There's the cheer. Okay. Clear directions. Oh gosh, I gotta get ten here. Where, where is it? Embedded multiple formative assessments throughout. That would be a great way to structure. Yes. Use data to diversify the group talent. Nice job. Role expectations. Group really small. Hey, somebody got it. Groups of three to four. There we got it. There you got it. All right. And checkpoints. Good job. Um, 
submission flexibility. I like that. I call it creative. Yeah, let them be, let them let them be creative. Utilize the easiest tool. Yes, that would be a good one as well. Uh, I say don't specify a tool. Let them choose the tool they're familiar with. All right. Well, top six answers on the board. We got most of them, right? Oh, we got two of them. How about any other guesses? Option out of groups. Ah, oh, there's an idea. Sorry. All oh, practice with a low stakes activity before the assessment. I like that one. Deb kind of nailed that one. I like it though. I like it. Here's one. Stable groups. That actually, actually was in there. Practice points was good. Support and structure of the groups. You kind of nailed that with the, all the clear roles earlier. Communication. Teach them how to communicate. I was talking about this when um, a moment ago when I was talking about setting up the group canvas message and setting up the group. Um, yeah. Oh, I set up a group contract. Good job, Catherine. Uh, I set up a, uh, a group email and just say reply all. Um, that way they've got it and they don't have to worry about plugging it all in. I even stick in uh, their preferred first names out of their meet and greet. So if it says their name is, um, um, I don't know, if it says their first name is Baltimore, but they go by Ivan, I even put in there Baltimore and Ivan in parentheses, you know, Garcia, so that everybody knows, aha, he goes by Ivan. So that even I learned his name is Ivan, right? And everybody can start calling him Ivan. That's just one of the things I do, but communication is important. And then we got to remember, always start with telling them why group uh, work is important. That comes right out of the literature as well. You got to teach them about literature. But anyway, there you go. Woo! Who's the winner? We'll go for Sue, even though she's a tattletale. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, where did this music go? All right, all right. Those of us that uh, that remember the old days, uh, there was a movie out there called Short Circuit, where number five, the 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 computer or the 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 robot got struck by lightning and became alive, and then he ran around uh, Silicon Valley looking for input. Well, that's me right there. I'm looking for input. So if you would um, <laughs> share the uh, share the QR code with your colleagues and uh, and anybody else you can find. I don't think there would be a place you could share this QR code where it would do any harm. I could almost challenge you for that. Yeah. No kill of Stephanie. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Somebody else gets it. Stephanie. Sony Software. That was another one from the movie. Yes. All right, so uh, I needed 485. I'm at like a 90, about 90 something in there right now. Please, I need it uh, to get up there. Uh, it's a very important survey because if you ask me, there are tons of uh, there are tons of things to be gained when students work in small groups, and we're not learning what we need to learn about why they're not working and how to improve them. And I know that there is somebody out there. Uh, or some people out there that have really good ideas about how to make small groups work online. And we're going to find them and they're going to teach us, but we, we have to find them. And you're part of that. So please forward this as far and wide as you can so that we can get to them. That's my, that's my uh, pledge to get you to do that. All right. With that said, please talk to me, ask me questions. Um, this was a lot of fun, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the 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 uh, the game there to play to get the top five, you know, top six, and no kill Stephanie, and you know, Sue's the tattletale and all that stuff. But it's a nice way to look at research and have fun with it. And I think 
I'm getting close to my, I got the time down to 10 minutes, so. Dan, I was going to ask you to go, can you go back to the last slide? I was going to do a screen capture of your QR code so I can oh, share it a little bit easier. There you go. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. You bet. No questions. I have a question for you. Yeah. Was did this come from a need or just an interest or both? Well, you know, I'm a I love small groups. Every course I teach, almost every course I course I teach, I use small groups. Uh, I use it. I have basically two things in every course, and that is a research paper and a small group. And, and my students all know, oh, it's a keys course. He's going to have small groups and a research paper. He's trying to kill us. Yep, I'm surely trying to make you a better person. I, I'm terrible at it. Um, so that's what I do. That's that's part of who I am. I want to make you, you know, interact with one another and learn how to write and communicate. It's terrible. I know it. So, and as a researcher, um, this was just a natural extension of, of my work. I always... Um, you know, do a research project, it seems, um, every semester uh, in what I, something connected to my teaching, just to see what, you know, what's working, how I can improve it. And uh, my students sometimes are the objects of what I'm doing, and sometimes um, they're the benefit of it. So this will time, or this time they're a benefit of what I'm working on, so. Thank you. I was curious. The time stories on the news about the students who dropped dead because they had to do a research paper. Oh yes. I I tell my students that, and I'm like, you got it right. Yeah, it is a horrible thing. I just saw that on the news the other night about those 50 students. They died. They just dropped dead in the middle of the street. Crazy. <laughs> I feel so horrible. I know it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's you know I'm I'm a, I'm a murderer. I guess I don't know. <sighs> I I just feel like the students need to learn how to write and communicate. <laughs> One student got to me, he was a senior, and he said, you're the only faculty, in, I, and I graduate this semester, and you're the only faculty that's ever made me write a paper. And I said, no, 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 no. In English, you surely had to write a paper. And he goes, no, we didn't. And I said, well, you're welcome. He said, I didn't say I was thanking you. And I said, no, you're welcome, though. You don't have to thank me. <laughs> oh, Lord, it was funny. Well, poor kid. You've never had to write a paper in college. How how did you do this? Oh, I don't know how that happened, but it did. So, yeah. And it was a music appreciation of all places. The kid had to write a paper. <laughs> Uh, anyway, anyway, so there's a lot of research out there, you know, kind of going back to, um, you know, to, to virtual groups, the size is smaller, you know, um, I think as, as I discovered three to five is really that sweet spot. And I've heard, you know, a lot of stuff about five is the max, um, I, two is, is okay um, but it that's about where i found in the in other literature is three to five um and that's why i was kind of hoping that i would find that as well um uh, for me i keep them solid in a group for the whole semester the shorter the semester don't move them because once i've discovered once they get a a communication channel down um moving them they've got to reset that communication channel uh, and the reason why that's important is, you know, some students like to communicate by text, other ones communicate by email, others communicate by Canvas or Blackboard messages. And, and once you mix up groups, they've got to reestablish which one are we going to use. And so mixing that up takes them a week sometimes, if you're lucky, two weeks, you know. So establishing that communication channel and then leaving them in that group, I think is really important because then they can get into that habit of that groove and establishing she's good at, you know, the technology, 
he's good at this, she's amazing at this, and he's really good, at, you know, at mixing things and putting things together or whatever, you know, and and and, and learning Monday, we're gonna, you know, meet and work on this. Tuesday, we're going to, or, or and then Thursday, everything's due. We're gonna put it in this spot so that, you know, Becky can get it. And then Friday, so-and-so is gonna put it up so that it can be graded, you know, that's the rhythm of the week or something. And I think that's important that they establish that rhythm and that communication channel. So stable groups to me is very important. Um, unless you're working on something that's a different thing. If you're wanting to keep them on their toes and keep them working on different, working with different people and that kind of stuff, then that's important too. Thank you, Dr. Keith. Uh, so we actually start wrapping things up. Um, I want to thank you. Uh, it's been an awesome, engaging uh, presentation. Um, any additional questions that you might have, or you might post it on the chat or unmute yourself. I'll be posting as well the shuffleboard contest code for this session so you can grab the code and participate on it. Um, coming up, we have a 15 minute break and then we'll start wrapping up uh, Top Kit with the best in track and other final sessions. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Deb. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of fun stuff.